Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, I was, you know, starting to come on a little bit that week in practice and got inserted into the game relatively early. And we were down by, you know, probably 10 points or so, a good bit of the game. And in the second half, um, you know, it just so happened that I really, uh, you know, started to get hot. And we had um, – we were playing a zone defense against uh, Kobe, trying to contain him. And, um, you know, I was getting hot, hitting some threes, getting some drives to the basket. Actually, finished with 20 points, had 14 of those points in the fourth quarter. Uh, against Kobe's team. And uh, the interesting thing about that game was, number one, you knew going in how great of a player he was. He was the number one, you know, high school player in the country as a senior. And you, I remember seeing him even warming up, you know, prior to uh, our game and other games during that tournament. And he just wouldn't hardly miss. And he could shoot it. He could drive. He, you know, he dunked on us a couple times. But you could just tell he was the real deal even back then. And uh, one of the neat things about playing against Kobe's team, and Coach Harris and I still talk about this to this day, uh, they were they had a pregame ritual of doing the the sliding back and forth defensive slides and diving on the floor and for anybody that's followed Lexington basketball for for many years, you know that we we started doing that same thing and it came from the game against Kobe's team in uh, in that 1995 beach ball tournament where we kind of ad adopted we told the coach after the game or Coach Harris did we were going to adopt their uh, sliding before the games and that kind of get us in the hustle mentality and we went on after that game to win every single game the rest of that season, that 96 season, and in route to a state championship. So the game against Kobe was our last loss prior to winning that game. And then the next year we won, um, you know, our first, I think it was nine games. So Coach Harris still talks about that was 28 wins in a row uh, for the Lexington program, which was just finally beat this past season when um, Bailey's team last year went 29-0 and before they lost in the, uh, in the state semifinals. So uh, it's incredible that win streak lasted this long, but – uh, the Kobe game really was an, an incredible uh, transition point, not only for me, but it seemed like Lexington's program as a whole. Well, it was also a transition for them because from that game, they won 27 straight. They'll go on to win a state title themselves. No doubt about it. And, and of course, it doesn't surprise me that they won a state championship having Kobe Bryant on their on their team. He, he showed what he could do, obviously, in the NBA with five NBA championships. But, um, you know, who, who knows what would have happened in my basketball career had I not – uh, had the opportunity to play against Kobe, I probably things would have probably gone fairly similar. But I will say this: the confidence that came to me personally from from doing uh, you know those things in that game kind of propelled me to uh, finish out a strong junior season and then go into a senior year in high school, where you know I was one of the lead lead guys on the varsity team and ended up you know getting college scholarship to play at University of South Carolina Aiken. So uh, that game really propelled me individually, and it's something I've thought back on for years and years. Uh, which is why even yesterday when the when the, everything came out about Kobe dying in a helicopter crash, it's just surreal uh, because you realize here's a guy you followed all these years and it's been, you know, a lot to me personally from from how that propelled my career and to see that happen. We're basically the same age. I'm 41 and you just you can't imagine what his family is going through with with having you know four kids. I have four kids of my own and uh, just an unbelievable tragedy not only for the Bryant family but for for basketball uh, as a whole. Just. At that, when you played him the first time, what was sort of the pregame expectations you had, and what was the pregame plan? Yeah, the pregame plan, and, and I know um, you know Coach Harris and I laugh about it. We we were a big matchup zone team always under under Bailey Harris, and and you know were during that game as well. We tried to to play a zone against him, but we did try to throw some traps and double teams at times. We knew we couldn't stop him, similar to what I said several years ago when we played Zion here when I was coaching at Northside. Mm -hmm. There's certain players that. You know you can't stop. You can only hope to contain them. And Kobe was one of those guys where there wasn't any realistic expectation of really being able to uh, to stop him. We did hope we could hold him down a little bit. I think the goal probably was, you know, maybe less, holding to less than 30 points, but he actually had 45 against us in that game. So we were unsuccessful with uh, holding him below uh, the threshold we wanted. And, of course, we lost by six after a big, uh, after a big comeback. But, um, but I think the lessons learned in that beach ball classic, not only in that game but in other games, really paid big dividends for us down the stretch. Who was the guy most responsible for trying to guard him? Again, we played we played zone, uh, so I can't say it was one guy necessarily trying to guard him. Um, and I will say this, one of the neatest things, I, I don't think Kobe was really guarding me a whole lot individually man-to-man, -man, but I do remember a couple instances where, um, whether it was through a late rotation or whatnot, you know, I was able to knock down a couple threes with him trying to come out there and guard me. So that was something I'll always remember uh, with Kobe uh, trying to play a little defense there in the second half. But from our standpoint, there was no one guy on our team that had an assignment to guard Kobe Bryant. I can promise you that. Yeah. And fast forward then to 22 years later, and then you take on another high school phenom. How did you use that experience to prepare your guys for 
what are we going to face? Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of similarities there. When we played Zion in the playoffs a couple of years ago, and I was able to look back on my experience playing Kobe as a time that it's something to always remember and, and not something that kids need to be nervous about, but just go out there and have fun and enjoy the experience of playing against somebody that you'll be able to tell your kids and grandkids that you competed against. And so that was my um, hope with our kids playing Zion is they would go out there and let loose, not have pressure on them, but just enjoy the moment of playing against a guy that's obviously was going to be uh, really great at the next level in college and in the NBA. So that was my message to them. And I think they went out there. We, we, did, we didn't uh, play overly competitive. We played you know, well at times against them, but they were able to go out there and have fun. And a lot of those guys that have even graduated on our team since then come back still and they talk about the experience of playing Zion in the uh, playoffs. And, and they're kind of following him now, hoping that he does really well in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Just from going back to the beach, when you look at the talent that was in that classic, he had – Turns out Mike Bibby was the leading scorer in that whole tournament. Yep. Then they also had a guy named Lester Earl and also Jermaine O'Neal who was yep. in that game, that tournament as well. It was a loaded, loaded tournament. I mean, beach ball always loaded. That that year was no different. I think we, you could argue that year was probably maybe the best, if not one of the best, due to having Kobe Bryant at it. But in addition to Kobe, there was D1 players across the uh, across the board there. And, um, you know, even – in other games, uh, we played. We played against a guy, Pablo Machado. Mm -hmm. I remember playing against him. He ended up going to Georgia Tech, and I remember playing against him in the game prior to the Kobe game. But uh, there was there was loads of talent there. There always is. It's, it's incredible. The beach ball has maintained such consistency over the years in providing just a, a great tournament where you can always count on seeing guys that are going to be unbelievable players in the future. I guess, in light of what happened, does those memories sort of get even more cherished now? No doubt about it. Um, you know, I can honestly say I. you always think about, uh, you know, guys like that, whether it's Kobe or the Michael Jordans of the world, being around for a long, long time and, and seeing them and being inducted to the Hall of Fame and something that we'll never get to see Kobe go through now that he's no longer with us. But, uh, but yeah, those memories are definitely cherished. And uh, I try to communicate that to our team here at Northside, that you never know what tomorrow brings uh, because life is short and it can end – you know, just like that. And so, you know, whether you're Kobe Bryant or whether you're uh, Jason Harmon here coaching at Northside, you never know when your last day is, is going to be here on this planet. And we just got to try to live every day to the fullest and, and uh, try to serve God, honestly, is, is my focus here at Northside, to, to trust him with everything so that, um, you know, whatever his plan is for our life, life while we're here, we can, you know, try to follow his will as best we possibly can. Well, which do you cherish more right now? Is it that state championship ring or being able to play a – a future NBA legend. Yeah, I would say uh, they're two totally different things, so it's hard to compare, you know, state championship versus playing Kobe. Um, I cherish both of them um, a lot. I probably say the state championship probably more because those are so few and far between, but obviously playing Kobe, something like that is too. I think, uh, you know, I'm just very blessed to have you to look back on both memories. And if I'm totally honest, you know, I remember uh, my senior year, we went back to the state championship game and lost. Um, there at the, the Coliseum versus North Charleston, and, and to be frank with you, a lot of times I remember that loss more mm -hmm. so than I do even the even the win in the state championship because that was the last game of my personal um, high school career. But uh, but there's so many great memories, and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, at Lexington High School with Bailey Harris being there, um, which was obviously he was a great coach and a great mentor to me over the years. There's so many things that I look back on that I can that can say that I was glad to be a part of and winning a state championship and playing against Kobe Bryant were certainly two of those things. And those things I keep with me every day as I try to try to lead our program here at Northside and try to teach our kids how to become the best that they can be, not only on the court, but off the court as well, to try to be the best people. Because like we keep saying, life is short. you got to maximize each and every opportunity. Well, to that point, I might as well add a C to that. Winning the state title and beating an Irmo team that had beaten y'all twice that year. Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt about it. That made it extra special when you beat Irmo. And, and, you know, honestly, we had not beaten Irmo in a long, long time prior to, to beating them in the state. So to play them and to beat them, that made it extra special. Um, and, uh, you know, you couldn't hardly draw up a better script even in a movie to play Irmo in the state championship and beat them. So that, that was a great, great memory and a great moment as well. Okay.